Right, I'm here at the Lanzasaur in Playa Blanca because you know I like to meet interesting people with interesting stories. And I'm here with Kay and John. Say Hi. hello. Hi. <laughs> now, these guys got in touch with me because Kay has got a very interesting story. In fact, John, it was you that got in touch with me first, wasn't it? Um, so, Kay, first of all, welcome to Lanzarote. Thank you. How long have you been here? I'm just nearly a week now. Nearly a week, yeah. okay. And you. Well, John was telling me about your story and then and, and then you got in touch and said, right, I'm coming over. Do you yeah. want to come and say hello? I said, of course, of course I do. So tell us a little bit about why why you're here and, and, and the story behind it and why, why we're sat here today talking talking like this. Yeah, sure. Um, so I live with a condition called neurofibromatosis. Say that again. Neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis. So, because you sent it me on yeah. WhatsApp and I went, right, I'm definitely going to ask how to pronounce that. Is okay. It <laughs> it's a big word that, isn't it? So, yeah. what, what, so what's that? It's, it, give me some information. Yeah, sure. So, new fibromatosis, which is NF1 for short, is right. where tumours grow anywhere on the body. Wow. Um, so, for myself, quite a lot of mine are internal, yeah. Um, yeah. which caused a condition called scoliosis. Right. Um, which is why I wear the glamorous back brace the back to brace, yeah. help support the back. Wow. So I do have two titanium rods in my back to support it. Um, but through the NF1 and the scoliosis, mm -hmm. it yeah. caused double complications such as foot drop, fallen arch, um, oh which is um, why I look like Forrest Gump. Um, wow. And I obviously use a walking stick as well to get around. Oh, there you go. So, well, this, I, I mean, this is part of our, I mean, the, we have this little section, Travel on Talk, and I did a few videos um, about disabilities and traveling yeah. with disabilities. So this is, this is one of the main reasons to do this. It's sort of part of a, part of a series, because I'll be honest with you, and I've, I've said this on all the videos before, um, I don't really have a clue. Yeah. Um, so it's always good to meet people um, that do have a clue and can advise everybody. And also put people's minds at rest about travel um, because I get a lot of questions with selling excursions and stuff from people with disabilities and they ask me questions that I literally cannot answer yeah. um, so it's really good it's really good for that and we've talked a lot in past videos about invisible disabilities yeah. so this is completely different um, because obviously you you have to have um, certain things to, to walk and stuff like that so first of all tell me about the travel situation how is it how is it traveling around on planes and 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 sort of when you arrive in lanzarote and stuff like that um, so the whole thing can vary in general so for myself my mum's also disabled right and um, i guess it's worth saying i've also got a son who's just under one so we yeah. also had him and the pram um, as well um so i flew out of manchester airport yeah i arranged for my travel assistants to meet me at Manchester Airport, which took me all the way to the gate and onto the plane. So how do you do that, just out of interest? Um, I phoned my airline, so I flew with Jet2. Yeah. And it was going to Jet2 to arrange my assistance. Oh, really? Um, okay. So then when I got to Manchester Airport, I checked in with them and yeah. put my bags in, yeah. went over to our assistance lounge at Manchester Airport, yeah. re-checked in with them, and yeah. then waited in their assistance lounge for people to come and assist me and my mum through wow. to the airport once we were then through border so we was then departure side yeah and um, we were then sat in the assistance lounge again and yeah. then just prior to the flight they'll come and get you again and then take wow. you so that's so it's, it's the actual strange. airline that organizes that it's not yeah. the airport itself i always thought it was the airport that no sort of did so that. the airline works with the works with manchester airport's yeah. assistance team but they can put it through. And they put it all you. together. Yeah, so wow. that's what we did. And you meant to do it within 48 hours wow. um, ahead of time. So John, you've got your work cut out then, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, for us, <coughs> we're really fortunate really, because we, we live 10 minutes from the airport. Oh, perfect, perfect. So for, for us, you know, we have the option of tram, bus. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the tram takes so eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the good thing about Manchester is uh, because we've done our uh, early morning flight, is we get the twilight chip on the night before. Right. So um, this year, Jet 2 and a number of the other airlines <coughs> have started paying for your parking to drop your bags off in the twilight zone. Oh. Which is absolutely crap. Because we, we left there and we're in the car, um, there and back in 30 minutes. Uh, just go to the airport, park, get your, your token for the um, 
the airport car park. Yeah. And level three at Manchester Airport, straight into arrivals, check your luggage in. Yeah, just check all your luggage in, take your passports, and only one of you has to go as well. So, mm. yeah, so you just That's handy. Well, it is. So is that just with Jet 2 or is that no, with most airlines? Both airlines are. Um, yeah. Two we do it. Uh, Ryan Air, I think you do it. There's a whole list on Manchester Airport websites. You know, wow, so you can go drop it off, and then in the morning, there's no rush about. You just, yeah. you just go, and then you just go straight up to the border, the the yeah. the, the, yeah, the, the security. So, in security, yes. do they the the special assistance with security? What does that mean? That obviously you don't have to stand around, or you um, just go straight you go through. Go through a fast track. Like line. a fast track. Yeah. But do they still have to? They they still yeah, do all yeah. the all the searching and um, stuff like that. And again, that's been hit and miss. So yeah. last year, um, I nearly missed my flight because I required a full body um, search. So I had to go into a room. No, um, really? On, literally stripped. Were you search. looking shifty or something? I was actually <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably because I'm from Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, what, really? So they, yeah. Wow. Well, I suppose so you have to be careful still though, don't tested they? and stuff like that. So you're oh. fully swiped down. Things go into the thing to obviously track for any drugs yeah. on you. Um, they swipe the braces down because you can't go taking this off, taking your shoes off and putting those through. You then have to be fully... What an absolute swapped. nightmare. So it can take quite a bit of time to go through. So last imagine. year we didn't know that would take place. So then this year we gave it that little bit more time. But then on the other hand, my mum, straight through. Well, no problem. You, you must have. You, you you must have had a look. You <laughs> must, just thought she you, or you must have been panicking. You yeah. know when you get paranoid where you walk through. Yeah. You must have looked paranoid or something. They must I was have too thought afraid you were of losing my son. Oh, yeah, possibly. That was that, my yeah. Other yeah. bit is, um, they wouldn't allow me to walk through with him. Really? So then, it, my, luckily, my dad was with me. Yeah. So my dad had to walk through with him. My son was um, tapped down and wow. done from that part. Then security had to hold my son whilst my dad went back through. And then, obviously, thingy, but when I'm off over this way, getting searched, his bags are going off because he's got his milk in there, he's oh got his food God. in there, they're waving it about, I'm kind of like, I need to go over there. And where <laughs> were you going then on that holiday? Um, we were going to Alcudia on that specific wow. one. So you do, you, you guys travel yeah. around quite a lot, so although the disabilities are there, you, 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 you don't let it stop you yeah. getting about. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were just thinking then, you know, uh, 20... Other than the pandemic, we've travelled for 22 years. Yeah. Oh, great. Right. Before that, you know, great. Uh, uh, we normally do the USA. Oh, Florida. So that this is. is kind of new to us. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is short haul and long haul. Europe is yeah. uh, Europe's new to us, really, in a wow. sense. Wow. Uh, Florida, well, Florida's good, isn't it? Yeah. Florida's good. But what, when you've got a little man, it's probably better to <laughs> wait till a little bit older and then he can enjoy it more. Yeah. So he's on his second... Um, his second holiday. His second holiday in five months. Yeah, well, he looks super chilled on this, isn't it? So your mum's took him out, took him out, hasn't she, for today to yeah. get rid of him. So there's, there's, a, there's a, 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 another big thing that, that we're here for because um, Kay actually got... Is it an OBE? Um, MBE. MBE. Is there a difference between OBE now? Have I just got completely OBE wrong? Just like you've just put me a bit up my status. Oh, have I just up you? So what's an MBE <laughs> and an MBE? I don't know. Um, member of the British Empire. Um, oh, that sounds yeah. harsh. So this was so the Queen. You met the Queen. I did, yes. And you got presented that for what? Um, my charity work. So I've raised one hundred and seventy-five thousand um, pounds wow. for children to go on holidays. Um, so wow. specifically, it was Lapland and centre parks. That is because super cool. quite often when you've got a quality member of the family, yeah. um, if they've got siblings, they can be quite often left behind because mums, dads, caregivers are always at the hospital, so siblings yeah. are yeah, not yeah, always yeah, yeah, yeah. with the sibling. I've always thought that, you know. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've always thought that when I've seen like um, like parents with one, one child mm. with a disability and people do forget that you know if there's another child without a disability they probably get pushed aside yeah. quite a lot don't they so so you raise that money to what to just take families away or um, yes yeah, so the money specifically was for the charity when you wish upon a star yeah and I asked them you know how much does a centre parks trip cost yeah, yeah. And they were like oh it's like 80 to five thousand pounds to send so many families there for a whole week like pretty much all inclusive for them to yeah, do yeah. what they need whilst they're there. Wow. So then I raised the money for that and it was a similar cost for Lapland as well, um, which wow. will send the poly child and a caregiver with them. Fantastic. Well that is a, that is amazing. That is Thank amazing. You. So how did you raise that money? 
I um, did free gala nights. Um, mm. So gala nights like a charity ball. Yeah, so yeah. you dress up nice and swank. Yeah. We had a few celebrities that attended. Um, we had auctions, mm. raffles. We did 19, 1940s reenactment nights. Oh, um, I've got the Jeeps down again. People dress up as 1940s. We have the music, people dancing and singing in that sort of um, okay. era of time. I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I did a few sponsored spells, um, which <laughs> that's always interesting. <laughs> My spelling can get me in trouble sometimes, but I won't go into that one. Um, wow, you did sponsored like a spell yeah. Pretty wow, much, yeah. That is super cool. That is super cool. So from that, obviously, then you got the the, the award. So did you? Where did you? Where? How? Tell me the story about that because I've never I've, I've never met anybody that's got one of them. What do they do? Um, so I received the letter in the post. I can remember the day. My mum was sad. How old were you, by the way, when you did this? I was twenty twenty one when I got the MBA wow. from the Queen. So I found out when I was twenty, but received it yeah. um, when I was twenty one in the New Year's Honours list. And I was the youngest person that year to receive one. So what happens? You get this letter. Like I a thought, Harry Potter letter, and it you open was. it up. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if I can swear, but I thought I was in. Because I, I received this like formal thing, yeah. and it was like you're being summoned this like, and I was thinking, my heart's going like. I'll tell you what, what with that one. and getting, <laughs> getting searched at the security, you know, yeah, you, this is you, paranoid, this is why you got it stopped is. at the, at and the I'm security just, gate. Like, chilling out on the sofa, <laughs> like reading it, and because I'm dyslexic, trying to process the information, <laughs> I'm like, what have I done? I've got to go somewhere. Like, oh my God, I'm in trouble with the Queen. Keep, keep reading it yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. sunk in and then my mum's like no no it's a good thing it's a good thing and I'm just like oh, oh my god no. and then yeah you was not allowed to tell anybody and you had to keep it a secret so why it all gets announced in the new year's honours list so I had to keep a secret for like three months <laughs> well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that I'd have, I'd have done the opening on YouTube and everything <laughs> me so that, and then what happens then? You you go to the do you go to the palace? Yeah, we went to Buckingham Palace. No um, way. And because I'm cheeky. Yeah. And I've got a brother, and as we know, siblings can be left out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was cheeky, and I wrote to them, and I said I want my brother to come, and they were like, okay. So hmm. they allowed my brother to come where usually they wouldn't. They said I could take two people. I yeah. obviously need a driver. Yeah. Which is my kind Taxi father. Taxi driver, John. <laughs> then me mum to come. So I was yeah. like, but I want my brother there. Like yeah, my brother's a part of my life. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. So then they allowed my brother to come. So all yeah, four yeah. of us went. But that's really good. I think that is really good. Looking and thinking beyond that of the uh, of the siblings yeah. of, of families because I, I, that, that's really that is, that's something really important. Yeah. It really is. So so because um, me and Jack went to London a few a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and we went to Buckingham Palace. It, it, we were there and it got rained off anyway oh. like today actually it's raining today can you believe it that's why we're sat here we were going to do a terry's talk and we were just setting up and it started raining didn't it but we got Too rained cool. off at buckingham palace but we were watching when we were looking like the peasants through yeah. the through the things <laughs> like that and there were people sort of dressed up being allowed in and they yeah. had they had the envelope so yes. is that similar to what you Very did much, yeah. and then you went through so we had to tell them which car we was arriving in the registration yeah, and they the were car. putting all the stuff under and they do I, I saw this and i was thinking what, what's going on over there how are they getting in there <laughs> so you pulled up in the car and did they do all the all the oh, stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing that my brother did the car was all bit dirty but i even had my car cleaned <laughs> Yeah, proper, I would as well, John. And I would let have. my brother do the driving as well. Oh. <laughs> my brother, my son drives a lot in anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's done a lot of work out there. Wow. So he drove to the palace and he, you get searched outside the car. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah, yeah. And then you drive through into... Yeah, because uh, I saw the cars going yeah. in. So the, you go in and then, and then you come out and then the Queen comes out. So then you go into another room. Yeah. So then I got separated from my family. They yeah. go off in, in one direction. They take yeah, me yeah. through to like this holding area. Yeah. <laughs> and they kind of teach you how to curtain. And we'll basically do a mock run through. So you're all this way. And you've got the formal staff in front of you. And then they would show, right, this is how the men should curtain. This is the options for like a woman, a man. And then we'd all practice and you're just stood there kind of in groups no way. and then they'd then bring you through and it's kind of like a conveyor belt because then um, i'm here at the door and yeah. they basically say there's a person with the queen and as that person then leaves you then enter so the idea is by the time i get to the queen that person that was just with the queen will have then exited through that door so you kind of just go boom 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 wow. 
So what did she say to you? She asked me um, what I did for my services to children and families, mm -hmm. um, because that's the specific reason yeah, um, yeah, yeah, why yeah. I got it. So in order to to raise the funds for When You Should Upon a Sky, and I'd published at that point um, one Check book about my foundation. And then what did they give you? Like a, like yeah, a, it's a MBE medal. Like a medal? Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. that specific one, you can only wear in the presence of royalty. Um, if you want an everyday one, you've then got to buy um, like an everyday kind of pin badge. Like there's three types of different like MBEs that you can buy oh. for like, like different occasions. So like yeah, one yeah, which yeah. is like for your evening kind of gowns and everyday one, and then the one specific. I've also got. So where's yours? Them, then you just put it in a box. Mine's in the box in my parents' <laughs> cabinet at home. That's where we'll yeah. stay on the shelf. On the show. Wow, um, how interesting. What an interesting thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you also have to tell them who you're leaving it to in a will. You have to tell them that. Yeah. And it, if you pass away, whoever then receives it has to let them know who you've passed it on to as well. Is that in case you sell it on eBay? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's quite formal. Really? Yeah. I wonder if you could sell it on eBay. I've <laughs> never tried. Might be researched to Could be worth a fortune. That is amazing. And then the other thing, check this one out. You've also written two books as I well. Have, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they're about my condition. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, the second book, um, oh, because my condition is so varied, there's no two cases the same with it. I thought it was important to tell other people's story and give them a platform to explain their stories as well. Yeah. So the second book also contains stories of lots of other people living with the condition on how, they're, how they've been affected too with an F1. And that was, uh, so you, you wrote the books more to uh, make people aware of the yeah. condition? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay. So it's kind of all like diary based. Yeah. So um, how I've been at my appointment, my, yeah. my, my own story with it. Yeah. I've had my medical professionals um, contribute as well about their view of me. Um, yeah. About my condition from there, their yeah. perspective, um, other people that I've met over the years, about yeah. like poems and letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then others were living with the condition as well. My parents have also wow. inputted into it. Wow. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? So you've got you've led a very interesting life. Yes, yeah, but you can't do it without with the smoke. Oh, you've missed something. Are you done? Telling you missed something. You've missed something out. What you missed out? What about the torch? I know. I, well, I was going to come on to that later. Yeah, right. <laughs> what, 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 what's the torch? I did the Olympic torch, the relay. Um, <laughs> so I was down Blackpool, um, Fleetwood Road in Blackpool yeah. doing the. Do you know when they had the Olympics in, in London held them? I was a torch bearer uh, representing BMW. No way. Yeah. So what did you do with that? Um, so that's at my parents as well in Pride Place. I live in Eccles, mate. I ain't putting it in my house. Wow. <laughs> I'll be ransacked. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Wow. That is unbelievable. And then, so, 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 I mean, you've got a vast knowledge of sort of travel and travel and, 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 and disabilities. And I know we discussed a little bit about what you do for a living, but it's, it, it's advising people yeah. on sort of disabilities and yeah. how to how to communicate that. Mm -hmm. So what's important? Um, I mean, well, first of all, Lanzarote, you've been here a week. Yeah. In the hotel as well, Lanzarote. Yeah. How, how are you finding it sort of, it you mess. you looking at things around the island and stuff for disabilities? Good, bad, ugly, horrible? Um, in between. In between. Um, I'll start with my tour. <laughs> you, 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 you do tours. Oh yeah, the tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the tours are not good for disabilities. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I always say that. So we went to the coach. The coach pulled up. So yeah. we got on one coach. Yeah. They then, which was great. Um, they took us to another coach. Yes. We stopped off, and obviously I'm in a back brace. Yeah. I had the baby on me, but yeah. obviously for safety they can't yeah. have their own seat. Yeah. And he has to be obviously rear facing on me. Yeah. I can't go to the toilet then if he's on me. Yeah. So then I needed my mum to assist me. Yeah. The lady wouldn't let me mum in unless she also paid to go to the toilet. In where? Um, so they stopped off at a cafe where we had to then wait for another coach. Oh yes, don't know, yeah, 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 yeah. So we stopped off and I said to her, obviously, I, I just don't mind paying to go to the toilet. I've no issue with that. They, they charge you for the toilet? Yeah, then? so they charge you for one euro. There was no accessible toilets. There was no changing toilets. Wow. So I couldn't go to a bigger toilet to sort myself out. I couldn't yeah, change yeah, my yeah, son yeah. because there was no changing yeah. areas. Yeah. And I needed my mum 
yeah. put it well, put my pants down and pull yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, to do other bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't do that because wow. thing, and then she's like, no, 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 you, you must pay too. And I'm like, no, she doesn't, she doesn't need the toilet. And I was using Google Translate because English to Spanish. Yeah. No, 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 you must pay, you must pay. And I'm like, no, she doesn't need the toilet. I was like, right, there's your money. Yeah. Thing in. But then I had to have the door open because I couldn't get in with him yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to then shut the door because I couldn't get the turn. Yeah. So I chauffeur him back. No, my mum's like just like stood there. Yeah. And it was like I'm standing up again, which is like, no, no, I, do you know what? I totally agree with you on this because I get a lot of people that message me, and this is yeah. why it's always good for me to meet people like you. I get a lot of people message me and they say, um, either I'm in a wheelchair, I've got disabilities, um, is this tour okay? And I'm honest, I say no. Yeah. Um, for a number of reasons. The coach I was about to go on to the, the local bus here, like the the, the the public bus has got the wheelchair things, I believe, up and yeah. down. I see them I, I hear them going yeah. shh. <laughs> But the buses for tours are not wheelchair accessible and they're, they're normal buses. Um, and I said this in my last video, um, especially when we were discussing like um, invisible disabilities and like autism and things yeah. like that, that the, the, it's not, it's not, it's not a broad, it's a broad thing here. I mean, in England, okay. it's a very big thing, right. isn't it? And whereas here, there's not, it, it's not really, I don't know whether they've, not really sort of realise about sort of that sort of invisible disability or I don't know whether there's, because it's a small island and there's not that many people. And again, because we're on a small island, there's not that many disabled people either. Um, whereas like the UK is huge, so there is. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of, they do in the car parks put a lot of disability um, parking. Um, but in saying that, this is why I think there's yeah. not too many dis disabled people here because there's never anybody in the disabled parking. You know, you'll go to a car park, it'll be full, and there'll be about 10 disabled parking. So it's, it's obviously not something that's, that they're aware, not, not aware of, but because there's not that many issues and, 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 and people with disabilities, mm -hmm. I think they sort of just go, well, I, I don't really yeah. understand it. Um, so I think it's a cultural thing as well. Um, and they do need to be educated on it, that's especially right. in tourism. But I always say with the, the tours, the yeah, I always say with tours, they're not really disabled no. friendly at all. So would, do you think it would be a good idea, because I've always thought about this, to create a tour that is specific for people with disabilities, but in saying that, it would be more expensive than a normal tour, which... I think it could help, because it's, it's, the way I look at it is, is if you're to build something accessible from the off, you yeah. actually benefit everybody. Yeah. Because you building something for disabled people yeah, actually yeah. helps people who are parents with cramps. Because yeah, true, it's true, accessible true. to them as well. Yeah. Um, especially from a, a pushing around, so I've struggled a lot pushing my son around. Yeah. Because especially with the hills or the yeah. rocky kind of flooring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been difficult from that perspective. So I can only imagine a wheelchair user could find it difficult. And do you not find here? And I always say in Lanzarote, the curbs are really high yeah, as well, I aren't they? I was going to say there's yeah. not a lot of drop curbs. No. <laughs> <laughs> and if they are, they're still. A, so the drop curbs that go like that, yeah. they're still like that. Uh, I've, yeah. I had a little go in one of the, the little, um, like the Benidorm scooters yeah, yeah. that they have. I got one from your mum and I thought, right, I'll go out and have a little go in it to do a video. And I literally had to stop and get off to lift it up mm -hmm. the drop curve yeah. because it was so, it, it was so like that. So apart from, apart from like the buses and the curbs, I mean, um, what about the hotel itself? Is that... Uh, Majority of it, yeah. yeah. I'd say getting around this specific hotel, it's been, it's been all right. Again, you've got some of the hilly bits, like yeah. trying to get up has been difficult. So my dad's assisted with Miles in pulling yeah. him up the, like yeah. we, we've been up to the room, so yeah. kind of where, as you go round and up, I struggle yeah. on that part, trying to yeah. get the push to push him up. So that's where right. dad helps there. Um, then going into the rooms, it's not accessible to then get in, like it's literally the width of the pram. Yeah. And you've got the bed there as well. So yeah. I'm trying to get the angle to then get, say my son in, so yeah. if you're a wheelchair user, you've got the lip of the door. I don't personally believe a wheelchair user would be able to get, to get in. in. You yeah, yeah, your yeah. Arms. And the doors don't move anymore, yeah. they don't retract anymore. So um, we did say we're a disabled family mm. with a pram, and that's the one, the room. The room that, that they gave us. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, whether or not 
they have accessible rooms on site, which are yeah. a little bit different with walk-in showers. Yeah. And um, because it has a bath, which is a an up and a down. Yeah. So getting in in the bath has been tricky, but I just sit on the ledge. Yeah. Swim with them around and get in that way, so it's not overly problematic, but it's uh, getting to the room. The pool's quite accessible. Yeah. Um, to an extent, you've got the pool on the left, yeah. which has a ramp going in, so you can walk in and you can walk in then. And they've got up. the water park here as well, haven't they? They do, yeah, yeah. So we've not been in the water park, like into the water, but it's a bit too cold. It's a bit chilly, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we've had a little walk around and it was accessible to like walk around. Obviously, I ain't going to be going on slides, but yeah. they're all steps and stuff. So we, that, but you have the wave course. When we were walking about, and I, and I said, said about that, you said Siam Park, you've been to there, yeah. you love Siam Park. So w when you go to Siam Park, is that quite good for, for disabilities? Because that's a it's huge place, isn't it? Like, you've got the bits where you can just kind of like walk into it. It's the same with like Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon as well, like yeah. in, in the States. So like Typhoon Lagoon, if you wanted to go on some of their slides, some yeah. of them actually have lifts wow. to then take your walk. Do you go on the slide? <sighs> Hit and miss. Um, I have to be very careful um, yeah. going on them. And obviously with the steps, I can't do them. So yeah. if it's accessible where I can walk in a lift, I can't carry the rubber ring up with me at the same time. Yeah. So then I have to make sure I'm going on with somebody that has a ring so I can hold on to them. Oh my gosh. And then risk my life and go down. And that is a risk in your life. Yeah. <laughs> but even down to like actual theme parks, so you've got to be careful because they say no spinal injuries. No, like, yeah, they do have the, the things up. Yeah. Um, I did try my chances in the States going on the, I think it's like Spider Man or something, and I went up. Went in all the lift and stuff, went straight up to the top, went to get on, and he went, uh uh, spinal brace, back down you go, and I'm uh, like, boo. Oh no. I was probably good. But hey, I've got three passes to the, all the haunted houses, so I don't uh -huh. have to queue. I've got to but queue. you want to you try these things, do you? you want, I want to try and, I don't want to say be normal, because obviously yeah. we should all be normal. Yeah. Like, we're, not, we're no different from people, we just yeah. live different lives and have different lived experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, want yeah. to be able to try try out things because like everybody else I, I, I often i mean looking from the outside yeah. the outside in even with disabilities and i'm always honest you know i'm, I'm you know I, I don't understand certain things but i often see people with disabilities doing really sort of proper like yeah. things that i wouldn't even dream of yeah. doing and i wonder and i think to myself i do think i, I often like look at that and i think would I do that if I if I had a disability um, or you know tomorrow I had an accident I was in a wheelchair or, or something like that would my would I be thinking oh you know what I'm gonna go and yeah. challenge myself to go down and it, 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 I mean I don't know whether I would or not yeah. I, I, I don't know but is that what it is is it like right okay I've got this disability um, you know there's a ride there a slide there I'm gonna do it or is, 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 it, is it like a motivational thing or no, is it i don't personally think it's a motivational thing i just think yeah. it's they just want to live their lives and yeah just do what everybody else does yeah yeah, and yeah. not to be excluded but there's certain things that as a person without disability i wouldn't even dream of doing yeah. but you know what i mean i think it's not fear yeah 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 because they're, they're, they're daily struggles yeah. They've overcome that. So it makes you sort of, it makes you braver. There, there yeah. was a guy... Um, so like my friends are doing the skydives yeah, at the moment. Yeah, things like that. Um, there was a guy on a promenade the other day, that got the food just at the, at the end of the promenade to go up as if you go towards the lighthouse. And he, he was in a wheelchair and I went, oh mate, you want me to give you hand? He went, no thanks mate, I'll be fine. And, and yeah, I'll be yeah, yeah. I do, yeah, I do. This is, yeah. this is what I'm getting at, that, that you, you do see like people in sort of wheelchair disabilities and that and sometimes if you do offer to help they say no i'm all right i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm cracking up and and that that is where I, I sort of i always try and put myself in in other people's position i want i think to myself what well, if that happened to me what would i what would i be like i mean i don't think i'd sort of think well this has happened i'm gonna go jump out jump out of a plane yeah. i think that'll be the last thing i do i wouldn't want to do that now but you never know yeah that's but, what some of my friends are doing at the moment really? so um i'm also a trustee for a charity called childhood tumor trust oh. and i'm also their youth coordinator so oh. at the moment they're organizing a skydive and um, so we've got them all across the uk taking place oh. and the majority of them now are jumping out planes to, to raise money for childhood tumor trust you know oh. yeah that's amazing yeah, I, I ain't doing that. So, cool. so, so with regard, obviously, we've talked a little bit about the island and sort yeah. of getting around disabilities. It's not the greatest place for disabilities, but it, it's doable. Yeah. And um, what about the Lanzarote Airport? Was that okay? 
<laughs> oh, here we go. John's on one. Um, <laughs> Who decided to I... put the bus station at the top of the hill? Oh, I know, they moved that. But the bus station used to be right. It's, a, it, it's that, a few things for us, I think. It's a massive trek now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But there is but, lifts up there, isn't there? Sort of. There's a walk-in yeah, yeah, and then a lift. Like we, a, a stair thing, isn't there? We were left on the plane with someone else. There was no ambulance lift to take us down. Oh, God. So then when eventually we got all the way through, our bags, to put it this way, it took that long, the carousel had stopped. And our bags were just sat there. Yeah. The pram's somewhere else. And oh, my assistance God. was pushing me down. And I was like... Dad was like, this is that Miles' pram? And he's like, go and have a look. So then my dad went off down there, found his pram. My mum's over there and she's like, I've got one of the suitcases. And then I'm looking and I was like, that's how was over there. So dad went and got that one. And then we just sat there and then we saw the jet two wreck. I was like, oh, I'm staying at, you know, staying where I'm staying. And they're just looking at me with like sheer panic. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah. And it's like, I was like, yeah, I'm from Manchester. This is where we're staying, um, you know, got the coach books. Yeah. Coach had gone without us. So then um, there's like, oh, like proper panicking. There's like, don't, don't move, because if you move, you'll lose your assistance. So then our assistance person had already gone. So then we had to wait for another one to then push us to like bus stop 42. Yeah, yeah. A Jet 2 rep came with us and was kind of like to the driver, Oh, you need to drop these people off at this, yeah, this hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we got onto that. It's the disabled people at the front. So I sit at the front. And then it's, oh, no, you can't sit there. You've got a baby. So then it was no under 14s. Wow. So I was like, I'm in my 30s. And they're like, no baby. But the driver said I could sit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, Spanish law. So then I had to move. Oh, my gosh. So then... Miles is having a field date because he's hungry and he's changing. Yeah, yeah. I've still not managed to do any of it. Wow. Um, yeah, so it was probably... So it's stressful. An hour and a half later to the hotel. But yeah, it was the, the hill part. Um, again, so if you've not got assistance... Yeah, there's, at there that is... End thing, it's right at the top. It used to be straight out the doors. When I, was a rep, I, when I was a rep, I used to be there and it'd be straight out the doors. But I don't know whether it, they just needed to make it bigger. So, all right, so... The island, well, the, you've had sort of a different mixed. sort of a different mix of things yeah. because the other people I've spoke to, as I said, they had um, invisible disabilities yeah. like autism and stuff like that. So for them, you know, the, there's there's no issues there. Um, how does it compare to other places you've gone to? Is it is it typical around the world? Yeah. I know I, I know you said you got, went to Florida, yeah. and I'm sure America. I'd rule that out I'm sure America's like on a different yeah. level, isn't it? Because that's got everything down to down and sorted. Yeah. But what about like other sort of destinations and that? I, I, is Lanzarote I'd fallen say, behind in, in that area? In comparison to say to Alcudia, yeah, Palma, yeah. Palma, Palma, spot on. Palma, yeah, yeah. If you're in Palma, they 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 must have twenty ambulances. Yeah. You know, the plane pulls in straight on the side. Yeah. You were stranded. We did it twice last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were the plane, and they take you to... Take it to your own little area. Yeah. You take your own disability area. Yeah. So they drop... The ambulift area. When they, when they drop you there, they've got a fully kitted out bathroom, restroom, uh, there's toilet seats, everything that you want when you get from Is that Palma Mallorca, no? Palma, uh, no, Palma. Um, yeah, Mallorca. Yeah, yeah, Palma yeah, Mallorca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Mallorca. And um, they've got everything they need, you know, because these people need to go, so most people know it's women, but not been to the bathroom on the flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, well, that's yeah. the first thing I do when I get off a plane, I go, I need a toilet <laughs> quick. <laughs> uh, and and Manchester the, Airport have changing, changing places toilets oh, as well, which is important. Brilliant. So they, um, so they, You've got this full facility there. Yeah. It's all waiting there. And then when you're ready, you go around the corner. I know who's there. It's the passport control. Especially for that. Wow. It's so passport control. Yeah. Stamp it. You go around the corner, and there's a carousel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it is a bigger place, and it, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, I, I think. I think it'd be interesting if you, I mean, we were talking about wind and you said, where's a, where's a good Canary Island for wind? I said, go Tenerife. It'd be interesting to see if you do ever get to yeah. Tenerife. Because ten, right, so the, I mean, the Canary Islands, I mean, let's face it, Tenerife's massive. I've not done Tenerife. I think that would probably, I think that would probably be a lot better because it's more, bigger island, more people, bigger airport. Um, and Gran Canaria probably, because you've got Las Palmas, that's like the capital. Whereas Fuerteventura and Lanzarote, I mean, they're tiny. Um, they're tiny islands. So I'm sure they've got a lot to learn. So 
how could we get a, I mean you're you're sort of an advisor for sort of disabilities yeah. and stuff like that how could I mean what can they do how can how can we make it better there's so the bus for yeah. instance we went to get the bus um, this is the local bus the local bus I we, thought the local bus was good I didn't even get on it it was really? too full for me oh yeah so the driver will be was like, no no and just like closed his things and I'm just kind of like yeah. let everybody else on but because I had miles and I had the pram wouldn't let me on Too so did not even give me a chance to be able to pull it up yeah. but when I've been to Alcudia yeah they opened the side door and disabled yeah. people and prams had priority oh. so then your, your everyday people would move out of the yeah. way you would then go into their spots where it's here absolutely nothing yeah it's unusual that because um when you take a, a, an internal flight from here to tenerife mm -hmm. for example um they do the boarding and they always before anything they say people with disabilities yeah. and um and even people with kids yeah, yeah. yeah. so they they board, board them first, first. Yeah. yeah that's so that that manchester so one, and why was the bus full was it just where were you going uh, we were going to is it the rubicon so just, just, yeah. just the internal player blanca bus. Did yeah. another one come or did you not bother? It was about every 30 something minutes. So yeah, I'd, I'd already, we'd already just missed one bus. So I wasn't waiting another 30 wow. minutes and it was cold. <laughs> wow, so yeah. taxi's better. So that's what I said to you, wasn't it? I said, I'll, I'll just book a taxi. And I was like, yeah. by the time I've paid, my mum's paid, my dad's paid. Well, money though, isn't it? It's probably, probably going to be yeah, it's not. It's not too far off. In a taxi, yeah. it'll probably be there quicker. Yeah. So then in the end we thought, no, nah, we, we just sacked it off and yeah. came back. Yeah. Um, then wow. my mum and dad went out. So is there any more sort of tips for people with disabilities coming to Lanzarote, in spe specifically the island that, you would, so, that you've spotted and, and, and make people aware of that yeah. they might need to organise or plan in advance? I'd say if you're disabled, yeah. um, maybe on the physical part yeah it's been more mindful of the hills that may be present and the ramps side of things and the lack of drop curves yeah um in order to sort yourself out and the same with prams to be fair because if yeah. you've got a push and stuff or pull yeah, you have to or you know you're wearing yeah. the child and stuff it, yeah. it could be difficult it's like down the prom my dad had to pull miles yeah. as opposed to push yeah so every time you pushed him it was like as about to fall out of the yeah, and it's yeah. like well hey, head first because there's it, not that many hills here in Playa Blanca he, Playa Blanca is quite flat mm -hmm. it's not too bad Porta del Carmen on the main Avenida's all right but then if you're stopping sort of back yeah the hills I mean there's one that they're called cardiac hill wow. <laughs> <It's quite Jeez. laughs> don't ever stop up that way you'll uh, you'll struggle but it, so for me I'd say it'd be that part but maybe some wheelchair users are more prone to that so they're more yeah. aware or have the upper body strength to be able to do that. There's been a few people at this hotel that have the connectors to the wheelchair where it gives them the extra power, where they can yeah. kind of connect it so it kind of drives it for it sort yeah. of thing, which is quite funky. Wow. And one of my friends have that what back home that? as well. So you got it Fast and the Furious with the <laughs> where they press the button <laughs> and they go zooming. Yeah. Which clips on the front. Off they go. Wow. Um, is, yeah, being mindful of that. Like I say, this hotel, I've got no complaints the cafeteria that's not accessible yeah. i think what could be changed say within the hotel is yeah. your drinks machines and stuff are, are on a higher upper level yeah um so again depending on your disabilities yeah yeah, yeah you may course. need to ask for assistance or yeah. you may be able to get food or drinks down yourself yeah um, again that may vary depending on wow. people's disabilities so with regards to travel where is the number one place that you've been to that is like spot on well do you where do you reckon well i i met i reckon well, i love america so well, it could be america we can, say, say, we can, we can yeah. say america but we always do villa when we're in the states yeah. and then we've got the car as well so then yeah. it's i've got and we book an accessible villa yeah. so it's got the hoists and it's got the equipment yeah, in the villa yeah, 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 as yeah. required for yeah. disabled people. It's bigger. When you land, yeah, you s the wheelchair is brought to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you step up that plane, there's no landing there. Yeah. You step straight into your own wheelchair yeah. most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure America's got Quite it. Quite often to prams, especially as well. like Disney and Universal and that. There, yeah. you know, yeah, they've got yeah. it all. But what? All right, then. What about short haul? Where's been good? 
I'd say Alcudia so far. Yeah. For me. It's, it's more for the airport side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcudia, yeah. I mean, if I said to the guys in Manchester this week, I said, you guys need to go to Palmer Airport, New York, yeah. and have a look at that setup. Because what happens there is, they also have when people. you're going home, you check in, you're then, they then have their own, jet to have their own um, disability section. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a guy comes up in a motor truck and he takes you to the um, disability check-in lane. Mm -hmm. So it's only people who go through these lanes are disabled people. Oh. Yeah. So the people that take you to that point yeah. only take you to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Then you have people on the they other side waiting. Over. Yeah. They then hand you over to somebody who works at the airport somewhere. Yeah. So the guy's only running back and to check it, yeah. Yeah. and then the other's only running back and to, to the, to wow. the, uh, from the uh, security to the gate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and in Manchester, I said, well, you guys need to adopt this. Mm. I said, because you've got guys now. They go from all the way through. Them, yeah. Push one of them. Oh, no, they're two guys, you know, two, mm. two people. Um, basically, these two people now are, and with those not all the way through to your flight. Yeah. If, if they don't drop you in the yeah, yeah, of course. halfway bag. Wow. But I said, really, you should need to kind of adopt this process and go back and forward and then we take your halfway. Yeah. And then somebody working the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Too, mm -hmm. Because too. if you think that assistance person then that's coming through with you, every time they come through with you at Manchester Airport, they get injected. Yeah. They go with the yeah, empty yeah, yeah. pockets, put it out. And then obviously that wow. takes time for them. So it's so, proper stressful then? And I think that is the biggest thing. It's for me, it's the airport experience which can a lot of the time make, make yeah, it or break yeah, yeah. it. Because it's if the first you've had impressions, a isn't it? Experience and you're stressed at already. End, yeah. You're already stressed then um, a, a bomb board and then you think, what's it gonna be like at the other end? But yeah. you know it's been crap thingy, it's and you're stressed you're, when you're you arrive. anticipating that then for when you yeah. go home. Yeah, of course. So then it's kind of like, ah, oh, what's it going to be like? So when you're booking, do you do a lot of like research beforehand? Yeah, yeah. So you have to sort of so sit like down and about, go sit, see what it's about and how far it's away from like things such as the beaches, yeah. how far it's away from And how is it sort of um, communicated like with Jet2 and stuff? Is it, I mean, is there like a section? I mean, I, I know the world's changed to online, but imagine a brochure. Mm -hmm. Is it like, right, there's a brochure. Does it is there like a symbol that says this is disability? Uh, you know, some of that's improving. Um, yeah. So there's a company in the U think based in the UK, which are now trying to work with travel companies yeah. and stuff to work with them to really check out the hotels and is it is it an accessible yeah, hotel? Yeah, 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 yeah. And what I define as accessible could be completely different to somebody else. Yeah. Like again, I mean, we we sell tours and maybe we need to put on our website a symbol of some kind that yeah. says this is like transfers, not not transfers. Yeah, I don't really deal with transfers, yeah. but. Um, tours, it, it, it tours, Rancho Texas, water parks and stuff. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be getting in touch with you and say, <laughs> what do you reckon to this? Can I put a symbol on or not? <laughs> yeah. Is it, is this gonna be a, 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 okay? Can look at, I've got the expert on there. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got contact. I can drop <laughs> you a message. But no, honestly, it's really helpful, and I know that it's helpful for for these guys back home, especially if people have got disabilities, so they can know uh, whether Lanzarote is a good place, what sort of things to book, this, that, and the other. Um, and you know if you've got any questions comment on the video and i'm sure there'll be other people if not you're yeah. you watching you'll be able to answer any questions like that so that's fantastic i have got a little present for you as oh, always thank you. i've got some for you as you've well. got a present for me as yeah. well <laughs> i like presents it's like christmases right hang on no is this your book yeah wow look at that i've got the books i've got the books that is amazing. Do you know what? I'm setting up my, I'm, I, I said to these guys, I'm heading to Ikea now to get all <laughs> some shelves. And I thought, I ain't got any books to put on my shelf. Now, you there. wait till you see my next live <laughs> and you'll see your books on the shelf. That is amazing. So this is your story. Yeah. Wow. That is unbelievable. And then living with, I can't, still can't pronounce neuro it. Let me, neuro, right, neurofibromat. Tosis. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, near enough. Wow. That's as good as my Spanish. And that's you carrying, that's look, that's you carrying the, <laughs> carrying the torch. That's cool. That's going to make an effort. <laughs> that is so cool. I love it. Thank you so much. Well, 
I mean, my presents aren't as exciting as that, but when you do come and have a little chat with Mr. Travel on, you do, and I bought one for Mum as well. Don't oh, worry. I've, I've, obviously, <laughs> obviously, she's played a part by getting by, by taking little one out. So there you go. You, you are now oh, officially part. You. Get them yeah, open. Show yeah. these up. You're officially part of the Mug Club. Now this is more. This is this should go pride and place next next to the <laughs> medal and next to the Olympic torch. I want Mr. Travel on Mug there. So you're now officially part of it. Travel on Mug Club. But honestly, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been really helpful, really interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it. This will be part of our sort of traveling with disabilities section. Uh, I'll try and do as much as I can. Like I said, I'm no expert, so that's why I'd rather speak to uh, people that know and people that have experienced it. And then you get the right information. Yeah. You know, you're listening to me, I'm full of crap. But there <laughs> you go. From me, Mr. Travel On, it's goodbye. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And from these two lovely people. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later.